welcome to Winnipeg. Now, there's probably three or four things that I want to remember to say in my opening remarks. <laughs> okay, we're not going to have a sunrise, so I may as well get this thing focused back on the bird feeder again. Uh, yeah, what is it? It's about a month, and it seems like a month anyway. Oh, about the rabbit tracks yesterday. Uh, somebody had commented that there was a lot of rabbit tracks around there. So I came to the conclusion, like I sort of rolled my camera back to see when, when there was and when there wasn't rabbit tracks. And I'm thinking that perhaps it may have been the same rabbit. It'd be nice if it was a whole family of rabbits hopping around by my car there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, a few days ago when I said that I hadn't seen any rabbit tracks, those rabbit tracks were not there. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, now, uh, we, we don't really have a rollback as such. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, maybe in the screen somewhere, I'm going to superimpose what happened yesterday afternoon. And th that will be our rollback. And, and we got ourselves another Christmas card. <laughs> Let's see. Can you read that okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, how, can, how can you not read that, right? Okay. And then you open the card and it says, yeah, it says, get your fat pants ready. It's Christmas time. Save the remorse until January the 1st. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Jim. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it up. Uh, I'm going to have to rearrange over there. It's it's getting kind of cluttered on my wall. Oh, and those uh, those photos that we got from uh, from uh, Jane. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, probably select the, my my favorite two and and put them up. I'll stick them up with uh, blue tack or something. Oh, oh, yeah, we'll we'll get them on the wall somewhere there. I think if I rearrange stuff, you know, I don't want to take down the stuff from the grandchildren, although that's getting to be like about two, three years old now. <laughs> okay, now, uh, military modeler Paul, yeah, I got it right this time, suggested that possibly we could use uh, micro crystal clear uh, to glue uh, these these uh, little pieces of photo edge down. And I was thinking about that. Yeah, that's kind of sticky stuff. And then I thought, well, it, it might leave sort of a, of a glinting, uh, you know, because it's so shiny. It's not flat. So I thought maybe we'll do a test with that. I'll find a piece of scrap photo etch and glue it to a piece of plastic. And we'll, we'll just see where the, where the adhesion take, takes place. Is there any kind of a glinting going on? That, that, that's my only concern about that, but I, I do want to test it out. Uh, and there was one more thing I was going to make. Oh, I want to talk about... Uh, <laughs> I have had several people comment and say, remember to drain the tank on your compressor. And I was thinking, you know, <clears throat> I don't think people really understand why it is that you want to drain your tank. Now, I was, I was going to take my little compressor and set it here on the table, but you all know what it looks like. Okay, maybe I'll we'll talk about that right now. So you say to ask somebody, why do you drain your tank? Well, the most obvious reason is because there's water in it. Now, I'm not 100% sure how the water gets in there. I know that my, my furnace down in my basement somehow it extracts water out of the air as it's operating and it drains it into a little container which periodically pumps the water into my sewer. So uh, I, I know that in the, in, yeah, water, it seems that when you compress air, water will condense a lot more readily and it, it'll uh, form in the bottom of your, of your, of your tank. Now, <clears throat> uh, all right, so why do you want to take the water out of there? Well, I think probably there's a bit of a misconception. Now, maybe only I had the misconception. Well, because it will rust the inside of your tank. 
and your tank will lose integrity and it could burst, I suppose. Well, eventually. And so you don't want the inside of your tank to rust, so you drain the water out. But what, what people don't realize is that there's still a little bit of water in there and it's going to get rusty anyway, even if there's only a, a milliliter of water in there. Or even just if it's moist, it's, it's going to rust. Okay. But I, my, my thinking is that the main reason is, is because if you don't do it, it's going to get more and more and more and more water in it, which is going to decrease the volume that you can compress air into. And you're going to lose the efficiency of your tank. Instead of being a, well, I think this little tank under the table here is a three, three liter, I, or is it one and a half liter? Anyway, let's say it's a three liter. Yeah, it'd be about three liters. Uh, let's say it's a three liter and it would, uh, if it was half full of water, it becomes a one and a half liter. So that means you're not going to get the, the volume of air compressed in because the water won't compress. Well, maybe if you compressed it in a black hole or something like that. But I don't think water will compress at all. Now, if I wanted to get rid of all the moisture that was inside my tank after every time I drain it, I, I probably, like down in my workshop, I have a little machine that looks just like my little compressor, but it does the complete opposite. It sucks the air out of something and it's extremely efficient. Is it as is it efficient as if you took something out know, to halfway between here and the moon, uh, where there was very little air or maybe none? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if it's that efficient, but it will it'll extract most of the air and moisture out of whatever is you put in your vacuum chamber. And I, you know, I've got a system like that that I use for for pen turning, for extracting the moisture and so on out of punky wood, and and then. And then, and then I, I would get like uh, 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 we used to call it uh, cactus juice or a, a, a two-part acrylic that I would mix up and I would impregnate that wood with that. Where is one? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe in the if anybody's interested, just comment and I'll send you a link as to how I do that. Anyway, yeah, I could I could do that. I could hook my vacuum pump onto the onto the tank. And as long as the air didn't come back in somehow through the compressor into the tank, it would form a vacuum and it would extract all the water out of it. Then your tank wouldn't rust. Except that as soon as you re release and, and allow the atmospheric pressure, the, the air in the room, to get into your tank, well, it's, it's got moisture in it again. I mean, uh, where are we here? Uh, Right now at the model table, we are uh, 30, 36% humidity. Now it's kind of dry. I've seen it a lot lower than that. The lowest has been is 17% here at the model table. So, uh, uh, okay, I, th I think we beat this to death, but I do believe that there's a misconception about why you drain your tank. Uh, yeah, I think that most people think so that the, your tank won't rust. But uh, I actually think the main the main thing is you don't want to decrease the volume of the inside of your tank. Plus, it's going to make it heavy when it sloshes around in there. <laughs> now that that's my theory, and I could be wrong. I've never tested it. I've never taken you know. Let's say you take uh, and you get twenty of these little machines, and and over a period of time, ten of them, you you myth, you religiously you might say drain them after every use and 10 of them you don't bother draining at all and then after 10 years you you cut them open and look at the inside uh i i got a i got a feeling that the the the, the amount of rust is going to be about the same in all 20 of them uh yeah <laughs> uh but maybe i'm wrong <laughs> Okay, uh, let's uh, let's see if we can recompose here somehow and uh, try some of this this micro crystal clear on something. Uh, I don't want to be, be oh, you know maybe I could maybe I could I could do it right here. You know there's going to be a turret on there and it's painted and it won't matter if it's marked there. So someplace that's already painted because we're going to be putting something that's painted photo etch onto 
painted plastic. Will the will the micro crystal clear glint and catch your eye? Uh, well, I guess the person could always use flat clear on. Hey, I wonder if person could just use flat clear. Put put it on with a brush, very carefully, and then try and get your part on before. Uh, you know, I'm thinking again as I'm talking. Um, well, I do want to try this this micro crystal clear. Uh, yeah, it, it, that might work too. Uh, oh, another thing, uh, I should have, and I don't know why I keep forgetting about this. I should have used my uh, waxed pencil to to pick those things up. That would have worked a lot better. Okay, let's uh, let's carry on here. Okay, what I've got here is a uh, fret from the railings from the Rodney. And I had painted the, the railings while they were attached to the fret. And, and out here I'm noticing that it seems to be fairly well, fairly well painted. So I'm, I'm just going to select a piece from right here. And uh, now I know that where we're cutting it, maybe this isn't going to cut too good. Maybe I should use my uh, number 11 blade here. That might work better. No, I, I know I could nip this with my... You know what, I, this is harder than I thought. I wonder if my uh, special photo etch cutter would puncture that, or is it just... There's just too much area there for it to go through. Like like this should have gone through as well. Maybe it's not as sharp as it used to be. Maybe that's the problem. Let's just try this again. Maybe I'll put a little bit more pressure down on it. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take a bite back here. All right, we got it. Uh, and it didn't go pinging off into oblivion. Okay, now I know on the ends where I cut it, there's going to be bare photo etch there, which is going to sort of defeat the purpose, and we're going to think that the micro crystal clear is glinting when actually it's the piece of photo etch. So, but but on the on the edges here and this side, it, it's uh, it's been it's been fairly well painted. I'll put the macro lens on, and we'll we'll drop it down on our turret base. Uh, where, where it has also just been painted, and we'll just see what's going to happen here. Okay, now the plan is to put a little bit of crystal clear right here so that when I place this on it, part of the crystal clear is going to be visible along this edge, this, pa this painted edge here, which I'm trying to be careful not to scratch off. At least that's the plan. I'll put the macro lens on. Okay, now I don't have all day to do this, and I don't want to be putting too much on. Let's... Okay, let's, let's do that. I'll get the lid back on my crystal clear here. Now let's shove this over. So some of it is exposed. Okay, I think it should still be exposed there. 
I've got it facing you, sort of, so. Okay, there's a tiny little bit exposed there. Let's see how that looks once it, once it dries. Is it going to glint, or is it going to be like flat clear? Now, several people made the suggestion that we keep these until after the anchor chain is in place. Hey, so why is this not picking it up? Is it possibly because the area that I'm trying to... Well, that's too bad. Okay, where's my other tweezers now? Being very careful not to squeeze these too hard. Okay, I think the next thing we want to put on, if we're going to do everything in order, is our J6. And we never did find a decent photograph of that. Although Jason did send us a, something that kind of showed it, but anyway. I'm trying to get that off of there without scratching too much of the paint off of it. I have to remember not to not to use this really sticky double sided tape here. I know a couple of a couple of months ago, about a year ago, I had concluded that I should stop using this for for really small stuff. Okay, let's let's quit poking at it before we completely wreck it here. Oh, I got a message. Okay, live on YouTube, live streaming, Oscale modeling. Oh, you know I'd like to watch it, but uh, I've done. I, I want to work on this, Peter. I'm sorry. Okay, here's another one. Looks like it's from Aussie Frenchman. This print is so fine. Marine thinks you're the best looking guy on YouTube. Is that what it says? Oh no, it was uh, from Military Modeler Paul. <laughs> well, it sounded good for a while there, didn't it? Okay, this is the uh, Tamiya regular. Now this is the way I'm doing it, and if it's wrong, well, that's the way it goes. At least we've got something on there. Yeah, maybe a tiny little bit of clear coat to offset the uh, glue, but uh, I think that possibly this is this is supposed to go down into the slot more. Oh, maybe kind of like that, so it's sort of raised up a little bit. I think this is supposed to represent some sort of a pulley. It could be that this whole thing gets raised up and is completely vertical, 90, 90 degrees to the deck. I don't know, but 
Okay, that's the way it's going to go, and that's the end of it. Okay, now we need a couple of M29s. Um, there's one left here on our pallet, so it must mean that somewhere further back we need another one. Alright. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way for them to go on. I'm, I'm noticing that the slot is kind of at an angle. Oh, there's another one here. Alright, I guess we'll get to it. Is this going to want to fit in there at an angle? I wonder... Yeah, I think I think this is going to fit without a bunch of shimming. Or, uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I can just use the extra thin on that. No, they won't come out. Maybe I'll put the macro lens on and move in a little bit. Now, being as that this is a really tight fit, Now, these are supposed to be at a bit of an angle. I guess because there is the 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 uh, slope of the deck, these things are supposed these boxes were supposed to be basically horizontal. That's a, that's the whole idea. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Okay, moving further back, where I thought we put that third uh, M29 in, it's it's not an M29. It's a J10. And um, once again, it doesn't seem that it makes any difference which way it goes. Yeah, at first I thought there was hinges on the back here, but it, it, it also it seems to be at a bit of a slope. Let's see if it's going to want to fit without a bunch of... Uh... Sorry about getting my fingers in the way here, but at least you get perspective, right? Yeah, it goes at a bit of an angle like that again. I, I I don't know if you can see it, but this the surface of the of the base of this is 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 angled. Not real steep, but okay. Let's maybe get a little bit more extra thin in than last time. Okay, now I'll just give that a minute to uh, do its thing. All right, let's uh, quit poking at it, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. Okay, moving back, we need a couple of K6s. Run! Now, are they supposed to go all the way down? I think they are. There we go. Yeah. Well, it's kind of nice to see the sun shining across the model table. Yeah, that's one thing about the winter time. That's uh, kind of a bonus. The sun is lower in the sky, and 
and it is shining on our little part that we glued down with the micro crystal clear and we'll take a look really good close look at that tomorrow and uh, see if we can see any glinting on that little bit of glue that was or crystal clear that was sort of oozing out from the, the crack um, all right I, I uh, didn't get a whole lot done here today but uh, the mail came again this morning and there was stuff that I had to deal with um, for instance, I had to go over to my neighbor's house and as you know I'm looking after his house for him while he's in Mazatlan enjoying the nice warm weather um, and uh, I had to read his water meter and all that kind of stuff so I took a bit of time then I got back over to the house got all set down here and ready to start again I remembered I forgot to turn off his basement light so back I went <laughs> uh, yeah Okay, I'm going to call it quits for today's episode, and uh, we'll we'll look at this nice and close tomorrow. So thanks for watching, everybody, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.